What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Just 16 days away from the clash at the castle. And that is not the right castle unless Moana is battling Tinkerbell in some cage match I don't know about. That is definitely not the right castle. That is also not the right castle. Although their burgers are flipping delicious, not the right castle. There it is. That's Glasgow, Scotland, where in 16 nights, the superstars of WWE will do battle and hopefully a clash that is uber entertaining. But for this Thursday, May 30th, 2024, there are a ton of stories out there in the pro wrestling world, and I want to take some time to talk about them. Ain't got a lot of time today, but I got ample time, so let's get right into it. And I want to start with the biggest story coming out of Tuesday, shook the pro wrestling world to the core. You can call it a forbidden door. You could call it a prohibited portal. <laughs> But Jordan Grace staring across Roxy, the TNA knockout champion, standing in a WWE NXT ring across from NXT women's champion Roxy and the match made official for Battleground. Roxy versus Jordan Grace. And while Paul Levesque McMahon ultimately signed off on it, it was indeed Shawn Michaels who played the most pivotal part in getting Jordan Grace back to WWE in the form of his brand NXT. We talked about this yesterday, all reports indicating that it was Shawn Michaels, the biggest advocate in Paul Levesque McMahon's ear, saying we got to get Jordan Grace. We talked about it. The reports backed it up. Well, over the last 24 hours, Shawn Michaels himself confirmed it was indeed him, he, who got Jordan Grace to NXT. Michaels talked about how he was actually a little jealous that Triple H landed Jordan Grace for the Royal Rumble this past year. And ever since, kind of was brewing in Shawn Michaels that he wants to get Jordan Grace. Well, as it turned out, According to Shawn Michaels in this interview, Triple H owed him one, and it was a big one, a big favor. And this is what this is what Shawn Michaels used it on. He wanted Jordan Grace. And sure enough, that is how we got to where we are now with Roxy versus Jordan Grace at Battleground. Are you kidding me? Could you just imagine if you if you transport Jordan Grace into a WWE ring main roster wise against Rhea Ripley? Or Jordan Grace versus Jade Cargill or Bianca Belair, even Charlie Flair, even Anaya Jax versus Jordan Grace. Just line them up and watch Jordan Grace plow through them until she gets to like a Jade Cargill. That would be an insane matchup. But baby steps, right? Start with Roxy. What a match that is. And you got to give big props over to Shawn Michaels for staying resilient and stubborn in his quest to land Jordan Grace in NXT. Pretty badass. Now, another story that stems off of that, that huge Jordan Grace surprise on Tuesday night, is uh, reports coming out that the relationship between WWE and TNA is just going to grow from here. There's going to be more transfers of talent. Um, I cannot confirm the accuracy of those reports, but I will say it makes absolute sense. If you're TNA, you're giving WWE all the requesting, right? And I get it. They're the... They're the little ones on the block. So, you know, you're looking up at this this giant and they actually want something from you. It feels good. You got something they want. So it's like, yes, we'll we'll, we'll send this talent over. Just can, can you just mention the name TNA, right? <laughs> or Impact Wrestling. Uh, I believe it still was when Jordan was in the Rumble. Maybe it was already TNA or back to TNA. But just mention it, right? But at some point, you got to go, all right, I mean, we keep sending this talent over to you. We're working with you, giving you everything that you would like. Can you send the talent over? If it's a Lola Vice, just to show goodwill, right? <laughs> Give us a Lola Vice. But just send us an NXT talent every now and again. You know, show that goodwill. It's not just every time you're asking for something, we're just like, okay, because we're looking up at you. It's like you can also help us out if you don't mind. You know, we're not asking you to send over Trick Williams or even Ethan Page at this juncture. We're just saying, you know, it's got to be a little bit more of a working relationship. It can't always just be TNA's got some really good wrestlers. WWE wants them. They're the little ones on the block, so they'll just oblige to anything WWE is requesting. But we are hearing that there's supposed to be a much... 
you're going to start to see a much broader relationship between TNA and WWE going forward and a lot more swapping of the talents. Those are the reports. Again, I cannot confirm the accuracy, but I totally believe those reports. I think TNA now understands they have a lot of what WWE not only would want, but could actually use. And this is a beneficial relationship for everybody. While Tony Khan is over there talking about forbidden doors, you can have your prohibited portal over here. And real quick, we might as well stick. This next story sticks with the whole Tuesday night NXT surprise debuts and the big stories. One of those, of course, being Ethan Page. Ethan Page debuting on Tuesday night, taking out Trick Williams. Ethan Page claims recently, just literally late yesterday, late afternoon, he claims, sent out his own video post, that he is not signed to any company, right? All the reports came out right after Tuesday's debut. All these reports stated that he's signed with WWE as if that's something we didn't know, right? He was literally there in a WWE NXT ring. (laughs) Chances are he signed. Thank you for the post reporting. But after all these reports, Ethan Page decides to play a little bit of storyline here. And he puts out this post and he says, I haven't signed any contract. I I am not signed to any company. And he says, but if NXT is smart, they will they will jump on it because basically he's playing the role of MJF, right? Almost like the bidding war of 2024. Ethan Page is stating he's a hot free agent right now. And with all the buzz, he talked about how there was like a millions or millions of views across all social media of what he did to Trick Williams. So because of that, he is claiming he is one of the biggest stars right now. NXT should jump on that and sign him. I like this, right? We already know he's officially signed. There's no way they put him in front of that audience in that ring if he's not officially signed. But I love how they're bringing that into the story, man. There's no harm, no foul with putting in the storyline that you did that on your own accord. You are not signed. It makes it more fun. How is NXT going to approach this? How is Ava going to approach this? Are they going to sign him? Are they going to say no? In fact, what you did, you're banned from the building and Ethan Page doesn't take no for an answer. You could do a lot of fun stuff with this. So I love the fact that even though we know he's signed, he's going to play with this a little bit. WWE is going to play with this and they're going to act like, no, he's not. Right now, he's just the outsider. Maybe we'll sign him. But Ethan Page claiming he is not signed to WWE going against all the reports. We'll switch over to AEW and current talent Soraya, formerly known as Paige in WWE. Apparently, her match on Wednesday Night Dynamite got Das Boot off of the show. In fact, separate reports lately have been claiming that Tony Khan has been rewriting shows up until the show start time. Now, these are reports we used to hear about Vincent Kennedy McMahon. We're now starting to hear this about Tony Khan and AEW. Quickly, once those initial reports came out, people within AEW quickly denied those reports. But then reports afterwards came out saying, no, it's true. In fact, the talent, a lot of talent is frustrated because they don't know what they're doing minutes before the show even goes live. So that's that's a side story in and of itself, but For Soraya, her match got booted off of the show, and then afterwards, she left a post, and just as quick as this post went up, it quickly went down. She deleted it not long after, but um, what it said originally, before it was taken off, and I quote from Soraya, I'm about to really start speaking my mind, end quote, and again, that was quickly taken off, I believe within the hour. So this doesn't sound like Soraya is happy, obviously, um, but it could be for any uh, any number of things. But we do believe it coincides with getting booted off of the show, because, again, this was right after that match got booted. That post went up, then quickly taken down. So you can pretty much you can fit the two together, I believe. But it, what we all can agree on, it doesn't sound like she's too thrilled. That's usually Soraya, though. She's usually um, she's usually unhappy about one thing or the other at all times, it seems anyway. 
I don't know. It's one of those rocky situations where if you're Soraya, like so many talents in the past, whether WWE or AEW or any other promotion who feels they're being misused or not used at all, you kind of feel for them, right? Soraya's brought out, flown out to this event, told they're going to do this and evolve their storyline, whether people are really into the storyline or not. This is their chance to evolve it. And instead, they're told last minute, oh, we're not going to do it. In fact... Uh, you can either have some triple aired moose cake at catering or we, we can give you a flight back home. And that obviously puts water on any fire that their story had. So that's never good. A talent never wants to hear that they're just not being used at all when they were told to get to the show because you are being used. On the flip side, you can see where Tony Khan's coming from. He's got a lot of things to handle within a two hour show and Soraya is probably not at the top of his list. And that's the problem, right? That's the clash. Not at the castle, but that's the clash in Tony Khan's office. (laughs) Soraya and Tony. Uh, That's that's the beef. So, remains to be seen if uh, that will get or has already been resolved between Soraya and AEW. Tony Khan. Over to NXT. Let's go back. We got Flipper. I told you, a lot of stories, all the different companies. So we're going to flip-flop a little bit. But back over to NXT. Brooks Jensen is claiming that he has been turned away from recent WWE events. WWE Raw events, he's been turned away. And even NXT events, he has been turned away. Other posts by Jensen uh, alluding to the fact that he has either been released or is going to be released by the company. Um, Brooks Jensen has last wrestled March 12th. He lost to Oba Femi, I believe (laughs) is is how you pronounce that, right? Oba, March 12th. That's the last time you saw Brooks Jensen wrestle. And again, that was in a losing manner. So this could be one of those situations where he, if he hasn't already been released, he is, he is either going to be, or just not be re-signed. The company has started to do this where they tell talents, we're not going to re-sign you. And so it's kind of like this weird period where you're still with the company, but you best be looking for new work because the company has already told you, like Drew Gulak, for instance, he didn't officially get released from what we're told. They're going to let the contract run out, which is imminent, and then they're just not going to re-sign him. You got to believe the Ronda Rousey situation and pulling Rousey's sweatpants string. You got to believe that was the final nail for for Drew Gulak, but Brooks Jensen looks to be kind of the latest casualty in the NXT releases or just not re-signing of a lot of talent. It'll be interesting to see. And the reason we don't think he's been released yet, even though he's also posting bookings, by the way, where you can book Brooks Jensen, which usually the company does not allow. So that's another sign that he's no longer with the company or isn't going to be soon. But the reason we believe it hasn't been official yet is because he's actually still on the active roster page for WWE talent. And that's a legal page. So there's still some connection with Brooks Jensen and WWE. So we'll be keeping an eye on that on that as well. More coffee, BC. Uh, should we stick with NXT? This is kind of an interesting developing story as well. GG Dolan, absent from this week's Tapings, and that's huge because Gigi is currently in a storyline with Ariana Grace. And reports were indicating before Tuesday actually went live for NXT, reports were claiming that that story has been dropped with no official word as to why. Ariana Grace, Gigi Dolan's story just dropped out of thin air. No reason, no explanation. And then we find out that Gigi was not at the tapings this past Tuesday. So that is another story we're kind of keeping an eye out. Is there a falling out between NXT and Gigi Dolan and vice versa? Is Gigi on that same kind of um, outside looking in like Brooks Jensen? We'll have to keep an eye on Gigi Dolan as well. But that's an odd turn of events. The storyline dropped and she was not at NXT this week. Uh, We'll go over to Chad Gable. Speaking of a lot of contract talk, Chad Gable's contract is reportedly due to expire imminently. Some reports even saying next week. Sports Illustrated was re-quoting some report as well. Sports Illustrated saying it's about a week away from Chad Gable 
and his contract expiring, he's right there with Becky Lynch and Natalia. So there's a lot of wrestler contracts expiring, but Chad Gable should be at the top of your priority list to re-sign. If you're Paul Levesque McMahon, there's no there's absolutely no waiting on this. You know, Becky Lynch, okay, you're gonna play a little you're gonna play a little waiting game, right? See where Becky's at, come come to us with a number and, and your desires, and we'll come to you with what we expect. You know, Drew McIntyre, they kind of strung it along for a bit. A lot of contracts, you're starting to see that. But with Chad Gable, this guy is, he covers every base. I mean, he checks off every box. He could he could go in the ring with the best of them and even better than the best of them. He could go on the microphone. He could carry storylines on his back. This dude is believable, but he's also got the comedy aspect. He could play your face. He could play your heel. He can get the crowd behind him like a true Rudy story, or he can make you literally want to boo the shit out of him right out of the building. Chad Gable does it all. He's currently one of the best storylines in WWE right now with the Alpha Academy about to turn on him because he's such a dick. Um, Chad Gable's contract expiring is what we're hearing imminently. Even some reports claiming within a week, they have to sign this dude quick because the latest word we're getting, they have yet to do that. Well, you got, you got a week to do it, man. This is Chad Gable. We're talking about, let's not play around with that. Moving on. Let's go a little bit more lighthearted for this one. Finn Balor's response to the kiss heard round the world Monday night on raw. Some people didn't see it. It went off the air before the kiss was planted, but Liv Morgan laying one on Dominic Mysterio. And if you were wondering what the feeling was within the judgment day members, they could have easily went the storyline route, right? And, and been slamming Dominic for not being focused and pissing off mommy and causing tension within the within the group. But Finn Balor was like, dude, I, I can't even slam the dude's game. Balor just put, he got game. <laughs> That's all he posted. <laughs> if you're wondering Balor's position on this, knowing that mommy's going to be pissed, knowing this is a massive distraction for the group, Balor couldn't even stay in storyline or character. He's just like, he got game. <laughs> That's got to make you, I don't even blame Balor. You can't even stay in character or storyline for that, man. Look at what they have Dominic do. He's between Rio Ripley and Liv Morgan. This dude's got it made right now. You got to give props at that point. All right, moving over to, uh, these are some of the bigger stories here. Uh, we'll start with Charlotte Flair. Ric Flair recently, in an interview, stating that, and this we already knew this, uh, we saw this from day one, that Charlotte Flair's rehab is going exceptionally well. In fact, the word we were getting from the jump was ahead of schedule. In fact, Ric Flair claims Charlotte Flair is working out twice a day. You got to believe that's even outside the bounds of what rehab is, is wanting her to do because that's just Charlotte's mindset. Just go, go, go. Twice a day in her workouts, Ric Flair saying she recently filmed a movie, much like Joanna Y, Roman Reigns, uh, recently filmed a movie as well. So that, that tells you how good Charlotte is feeling. Man, she's out there filming movies, working out twice a day. You got to believe it is only a matter of time before Charlotte Flair is back in that ring. And if that's the case, you got to believe she is going to rack up championships. I truly believe 41 in Vegas, she's going to be tying Ric Flair's record. I think she's going to win two more titles before that. Win one, quickly lose it, and then another championship at 41. And I believe that would tie the record, right? 16? So anyway, that's what it's looking like. Charlie's 16 time. Is that something you guys want to see? Charlotte Flair come back, win her 15th and eventual 16th title? Um, both in the very near future? Or are you in the camp of no thank you, BC? I don't need to see Charlotte Flair win another title for another five years. She's won enough in a short amount of time. I'm all set. <laughs> Wherever, whatever side of the fence you stand on as it pertains to Charlotte Flair, uh, she's on her way back soon, and you gotta believe she's gonna rack up titles. Subsequently, another big return right up in the same realm, right? The, the two biggest stars that Vince McMahon propped up was Charlotte Flair and Roman Reigns. Um, a lot of people believe that the only person that loves Roman Reigns and Charlotte Flair more than Vince and Kennedy is Paul Levesque McMahon. He puts him on an even larger pedestal, a much higher pedestal. And if that's the case, 
You can see big things, not just from Charlie when she gets back, but Roman Reigns, who is training for a return. Video video has surfaced of Roman in the gym, and this dude has his game face on. Roman looks like he is ready to rock. This is this is game day training for Roman. And this coincides with a report we were hearing. Before this video even surfaced, we were hearing reports that WWE has the date, June 21st, in mind for Roman's return. That's not confirmed, by the way. But that was a report before this, this training video surfaced. And June 21st, that's interesting, right? Because if you look at the calendar, that is six days after the Clash at the Castle. That is the post-Smackdown for the Clash. That's huge. And the venue, Chicago, Rosemont, All-State Arena. A massive venue, a massive date. That is the first show that catapults outside of Raw, post-Clash's Raw. SmackDown is the first set of shows that is going to catapult all storylines for SummerSlam. And then at the end of August, you have the Bash in Berlin, but you can easily take out Roman for that. It's SummerSlam that's the biggest focus right now for WWE and Roman. So by doing June 21st, you avoid the travel to Scotland and you're able to have ample time to set up a SummerSlam feud and matchup. So June 21st was a date that we were hearing upon further research on the calendar. That date makes sense. And it's imminent, man. That's coming up. So basically, keep an eye out. That might not be the only footage or post you see of Roman Reigns clanging and banging as his return looks to be imminent. Will Solo have some splaining to do? That's what I got for you guys, man. Until next time, and there will be that next time, SmackDown tomorrow night, and soon thereafter, obviously, an amplified review of said so. So, with that said, top guys, we are out. BC in the unit saying check you. Peace!